so as you could tell, uh, numbers 1, 2, and 3 are very similar, right? They all have the x minus 2 as a binomial. So I just want to make it clear how multiplicity works, okay? Um, number 1, that's a linear function. That's really just a line. And if we think about y equals mx plus b, or even more important, if we think about that h shift that we had in semester 1, um, or what we're doing now, which is setting x minus 2 equal to 0, what do we get as an answer? x equals 2, right? So we get x equals 2 as an answer, which means you go to your x-axis, you go to 2, and you put a dot right there. Now we know that it's going to cross right through it, but what we need to determine is what kind of multiplicity does the answer 2 have? And the multiplicity is simply 1 because there's a power of 1 up here. So what kind of uh, intersection will it be? It's going to cross right through it like a line. Does that make sense? So that's the type of intersection it'll have, right? Um, if we move on to number 2 over here, um, that one has the power of 2. And on this one, you could go back to last semester and, and already know what kind of graph this, graph this will be. It's a uh, quadratic, which gives you a par parabola. And if you think about the parent graph of a parabola, um, that one has the vertex at the origin, 0, 0. So your parabola would be like that if it had the vertex at 0, 0. But you could think of this as uh, the h shift to 2 to the right. So your parabola is going to be shifted over um, 2 this way. So you know your solutions are going to be right there. And your parabola is actually going to be like this, right? Um, but the way we're doing it today is we take the factored form function and set it equal to 0 and solve. So when you say x minus 2 equals 0 and you solve it, you get x equals 2 as an answer. x equals 2 as an answer. And that's why we put our dot right here because the answers are the x-intercepts. Now, this does have the multiplicity, uh, multiplicity of 2 because it has the power of 2 right there. So what does that mean? It's not going to cross through the way it did over here. Over here it crossed through like a line because it had the multiplicity 1. But over here it has the multiplicity 2. So what that does is it makes it be a parabola. It doesn't actually cross through, it just touches. Okay, so it just touches. If we wanted to be exact, we'd have to find other coordinates beside this one. Um, and you could go with the pattern 1, 1, 2, 4 if you wanted to from last semester. But right now we're really just worried about demonstrating that we understand solutions and how they actually uh, uh, are represented as uh, intercepts, okay? So when you have the multiplicity 2, it just touches. When you have the multiplicity 3, that's obviously a cubic function. Once again, if you set x minus 2 equal to 0 and you solve it, you're going to get the answer x equals 2. So if you go to the coordinate on the x-axis at the value of 2, you're going to have that dot right there, just like on all these other ones. Um, the question is, what kind of function is this? This is a cubic function. And cubic functions, a lot of people uh, struggle drawing cubic functions. Um, in other words, right here, it's not going to cross like a line. It's not even going to go like a parabola or this way. Um, it's actually going to be a cubic function. And a cubic function that has the a value being positive, right here there's no negative sign in front of the parenthesis. So a cubic function has the end behavior down here and up here. This is what a cubic function looks like right there. Now, the best way to understand what it really looks like, it's really a half a parabola going this way. There's half a parabola. And instead of me going back down this way for the other half, I actually take this half of the parabola that I, I would normally have and do it up here, kind of like a reflection on the x-axis. So you get a half a parabola up here. And that's how we get that snake-like curve, that cubic function. Okay? Of course, uh, don't circle it on the test. But do we understand that, guys? Okay? So that was just uh, very simple situations. None of those are going to come out on the test, but they will come out combined together, kind of like we see right here on number four, okay? So on number four, uh, the very first thing to do is to identify your answers, 
and one answer is what? Negative one. And you could also write down with multiplicity two. And the other answer is x equals what? Two. And we don't have to write multiplicity because it doesn't have multiplicity. Or you could say multiplicity one if you'd like. Anyhow, let's go to the answers. Negative one, there's a negative one. And positive two, there's positive two. And let's put some dots right there. There's one dot. Whoa. Did not mean to do that one. So we have those two solutions right there on our graph. Now, that's the first step, but right here comes a, a very important step. We need to determine the end behavior. And the end behavior is determined by the degree of the function. Okay, the degree of the function and also if your A value is positive or negative. So for example, um, if the degree, and I'm not talking about multiplicity here, I'm talking about the degree of the entire function. If the degree is odd, then the end behavior will be in opposite quadrants, like one up here and one down here, or one up here and one down here. But if it's an even degree, then they're both up here, or they're both down here, depending on the A value. So I hope that kind of helps. Um, so what kind of degree do we have? The degree is not 2, but it's actually 2 plus 1, which is 3. Again, remember, when it's in factored form, you add the exponents, right? When it's in factored form, you add the exponents. So you know your degree is odd, okay? You know your degree is odd. Let me write. And what does that mean, that your degree is odd? That means that it's going to have an end behavior, like a cubic function. Now, if your cubic function has the A value that's positive, then yeah, it's going to have the end behavior down here and also up here, right? Both of these places. But... If you take a look at that minus sign right there, that makes it not be over here and over here. It actually reflects it on the x-axis, so your end behavior is over here. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. Okay, so let me just draw some arrows to not get confused. And I have one arrow up here and another one down here to know my end behavior. Now that I know my end behavior, now I could talk about uh, what's actually going to happen as I get closer... So here's my arrow. As I get closer to that dot, to that solution of negative 1, what's going to happen? Is it going to go through it? Is it just going to touch it? Is it going to be a squiggly line? Now that all depends on the multiplicity of this answer. What is the multiplicity of this answer? It's 2, right? If you look at where it came from, it came from this one and it has a multiplicity 2. So what does a multiplicity 2 mean? It means that it's going to be just a touch, it's going to touch and then go back up. Does that make sense? Yes. So my graph is coming down, coming down. It's going to touch, go back up. Do not go through it. Do not go below it. It just touches it and it goes back up. Now, as you're coming back up, you know you need to come back down to get to this point over here. But is it going to squiggly line through it? Is it going to go right through it? Or is it just going to touch and go back up? That's the question. Multiplicity one, two, or three. What's the multiplicity? One. So we know for a fact that it's just going to Go up and then go right through it, okay? So that's your final uh, graph based on uh, your factored form function. It touches here and it crosses through here. Why does it touch right here? Because the multiplicity is 2. Why does it cross through right here? Because uh, it has no multiplicity. It's multiplicity 1, which produces a line. Now for the hardest, craziest one here, number 5. This one, there's a lot to think about. Let's first talk about our answers so, um, how do we get our answers, first of all? How do we get our answers? We need to split every one of these guys and set them each equal to zero, right? So, when I say this first guy, negative x, if I say negative x equals zero and I solve it, what's my answer? x equals zero. So, that's an actual answer, guys. And now, the other answers are even easier. x equals uh, two. Of course, that one has multiplicity 3, and I'm going to write that as M3. And the other answers are X equals negative 1, again with multiplicity 2. I'm going to write that as M2. And uh, we also have X equals negative 3 uh, with multiplicity. Actually, that one doesn't have multiplicity, so I could put 1 if I want to, or I could not write anything. Anyhow, we have our answers here total of four of them. 
Let's go to the graph itself, and let's put those four answers there. So one answer is a zero, and then we have another one at two. One, two, and put a dot right here. That's the number two. Then we also have one at negative one. Negative one, put a dot right there. And we also have one at negative three, negative two, negative three. Okay, so we have one answer, two answers, three answers, four answers. Let's take a look at the function and determine the degree. What's the degree? Is it three? No. It's three plus two plus one plus one over here on the x. So that's really to the seventh power. It's a seventh degree polynomial. All we care about is it odd or even. That way we know the end behavior. So this is an odd function, odd degree function. So we know the end behavior is going to be like a cubic function, right? And what does a cubic function look like? The end behavior, that is, it's either down here and up here, if it were positive, the A value, or up here and down here, if it's negative, the A value. And what is this? Is this a positive A value or negative A value? negative a value, so we know it's going to be reflected on the x-axis, so right here is the end behavior, these red dots. Got it? So let's put a little arrow right there, and put a little arrow down here, and now let's uh, slowly go from the end behavior down to this point, and it might cross through, it might just touch and go back up, it might squiggly line right through it if it were a multiplicity of three. So uh, at the answer negative 3, what kind of multiplicity do we have? It says uh, none, right? It's just the power of 1. So it is going to actually just go right through it. Cool? Now, as it goes right through it, I need to curve back up because here's my next intersection point. So it might curve back up and go through it again. It might curve back up and just touch and then come back down. Or it might go up and do a squiggly line right through it. Uh, what is the multiplicity of the answer negative 1? Let's take a look at that over here on the side. Negative 1 has a multiplicity 2. So what does that mean? Is it going to cross through it? No. No, it's just going to touch, right? So at the answer negative 1, it's just going to touch like a little mini parabola. <coughs> so I want to do that little mini parabola first. And then I might as well continue with my line and curve it up to that little mini parabola. And then... As I'm going through that little mini parabola, I don't want to go down too far because I immediately have to go back up and get to this coordinate right there, okay? So, uh, is it going to cross through it? Is it going to be a squiggly line through it? Is it just going to be another touch? That multiplicity of zero, is, z is uh, there is no multiplicity, so it's actually going to cross right through it. So from here, I need to immediately go up and cross right through that, like a line. Make sense? Now, as I'm going up, I need to come back down. I might cross right through it. I might squiggly line through it. I might just touch it and go back up, which would be incorrect because we know the end behavior is down here. So what's it going to be? What's the multiplicity of two? Three. So we know it's going to be a snake-like curve. So if I zoom in, uh, I know that I'm up here and I need to go back down. So let me leave it right there and, and, and watch this. I don't want to cross through it. I want to do a snake-like curve. And again, the best way to do a snake-like curve is to think half a parabola and half a parabola. So check this out. As I'm coming down, I want to do half a parabola, right? The other half would be up here if it were there, but it's not because I want to do the half a parabola going down now. Does that make sense? So whenever you have the multiplicity of three, it has to be this like half a parabola and then half a parabola in order for you to get it graphed correctly. I hope this helps. This is going to be on the test tomorrow.